There's a new kid on the block that's going to influence the Little Ice Age and that is Cosmic Rays and I need to start to talk to you before I talk about Cosmic Rays about water and steam. Now we all know what a pan of boiling water looks like and here cunningly enough is a example of water boiling in a beaker. Now water vapour and steam and really clouds of steam are two different things. Now the most water vapour in this beaker is immediately above the water and you will see that it is completely transparent. And water vapour is completely transparent. It's only when it hits cooler air that it condenses into tiny little droplets. Very often less than a thousandth of a millimetre across and as anyone who's ever boiled a pan in the kitchen for half an hour with the windows closed will attest that steam can hang around for a very long time. So that's a little word about water and steam. Now our atmosphere is full of invisible water vapour. The atmosphere that you look in through at the moment is in fact around about um, 0.4% water vapour if you, if you live in anywhere that's reasonably temperate. In other places like jungles then the uh, amount is higher and obviously in places like deserts it tends to be a lot lower. Now the amount of water vapour in our atmosphere has been steadily increasing and this particular example is from Boulder, Colorado. I could offer you other examples but they're not copyright free. So yes the amount of water vapour in our atmosphere has been increasing but what has this got to do with cosmic rays? Well to start with this is what happens when cosmic rays hit the atmosphere. Now a cosmic ray is a bundle of protons basically, uh, a variable number of protons travelling a, a hell of a lot travelling a hell of a lot faster than most other particles and therefore it's got a lot of energy and when it hits a gas molecule in our atmosphere then it spreads into a shower of other particles and these two are charged. So these are charged particles and that's important and the reason it's important is that here we have a cloud chamber now all a cloud chamber is, is a very heavily um, doped bit of atmosphere with water vapour in it in high concentrations and here you have a radioactive source and you can see what happens. The charged particles actually as they pass through the water vapour pull the water molecules into droplets and then leave them behind and this was used for an awful long time as a way of visualising radiation we don't do this much anymore but you can still find plenty of pictures of it of this technology very old technology on the web so these charged particles turn invisible water vapour into steam. Hmm. Now we're all familiar with a cloudy day and um, this is low level cloud and normally there is an awful lot more low level cloud than there is high level cloud and this is the kind of thing that we're used to seeing. However, this is high level cloud, way, way up, miles up in the atmosphere, and you can see the shape of it. And uh, this is cloud that is created almost entirely 
by cosmic rays and by the solar wind from the sun. Now, our Earth is surrounded by a thing called the magnetosphere, which is what helps protect us from some of these charged particles. There are two things that drive the magnetosphere that make it bigger. One is the natural magnetism of the Earth, and the other is the solar wind that it protects us from, because the charge from the solar wind helps balloon our magnetosphere outward. But in a period like we have at the moment, where there is very little solar wind, then that magnetosphere shrinks. And practically the only thing that's supporting it is the magnetism of the Earth. Now, here's the bad news. And the bad news is that the magnetism of the Earth has been decreasing over the last couple of decades. And it decreased very rapidly in 2015 to the point where a lot of people thought the poles were going to switch, which happens every so often at random, it seems, that the North Pole suddenly becomes the South Pole and vice versa. Very confusing for people with compasses. And uh, the last time this happened was a couple of thousand years ago, and we're due for it to happen again. And typically what happens is the Earth's strength, magnetic field strength decreases, 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 and then it starts increasing again, but in the new polarity. And we know this from rocks on the seabed where the, the uh, magma has pushed up and it leaves bands behind it. And we can date these bands and therefore we get dates for these magnetic field reversals. So we think we're in for one of these within the next 50 years or so, but our magnetic field currently is very, very weak. So it's not acting as much of a shield for these cloud-causing particles. And just to rub this in, this is a picture taken from ISS in 2012, or thereabouts, and you can see there's a lot of low-level cloud. There's a few little bits of high-level cloud here and there, these kind of marble patterns, but not an enormous amount. And here's a picture that was taken late in 2016. Oops. And you can see all of these high-level cloud formations that are in fact extremely dense. All of these top clouds here are caused by a combination of solar wind and cosmic rays. More cosmic rays than solar wind because the cosmic rays actually split apart into hundreds of tiny chunks, if you like. Each chunk whizzes off in a different direction, leaving a vapour trail behind it. So this is the next factor because if the Earth has a large cloud coverage at a high altitude, then the amount of sunlight that is reflected increases. The amount of sunlight that reaches the ground decreases. And the Earth at the moment seems to be clouding up at quite a rate, especially with these high level clouds. And no, I don't have a figure for this yet. I'm going to do a, a video very shortly uh, in which I will actually discuss all these figures and what it means possibly for the total loss of sunlight coming to the Earth with all these different factors, including the ones I've talked about in my early videos, such as volcanicity. And I'm going to leave you with a picture of um, the latest volcano, Western Indonesia. Now. A lot of people are saying that volcanicity, why well, it hasn't increased, it hasn't increased. If you look at the numbers of active volcanoes, you're right, it's gone up and down. It's sort of like one or two um, higher some years, one or two lower another years. And uh, another helpful gentleman on the TV recently pointed out that, oh, most of the eruptions we've had are small. 
Well, yes, but there is a problem there, and that is the fact that whilst a big explosive eruption can have a huge effect within months and everyone notices it, um, you get dust all over your car, you get cooler days, it's over within days. Now these smaller volcanoes can rumble on releasing particulates into the atmosphere and sulphur dioxide for decades. Yes, decades. And this particular volcano in western Indonesia is one of a trio of volcanoes in Indonesia that regularly re-erupt all the time. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful and uh, if you have, please like, share and subscribe and you can hear my voice is going, which is why I haven't done many videos recently because I would be unable to get through an entire video without coughing myself to death. Well, you could subscribe to Arduinotronic or just go jump in a lake.